All right. So um, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. The, the floor is yours. Thank you. So good evening, you guys. I'm Martha Camacho Rodriguez, and I'm a resident of Downey, and I currently sit on um, the Cerritos College Board. <laughs> and um, I'm back again. Uh, the four years went by too fast, and that's a good thing in one way. Um, and so I'm here again before you, uh, seeking your endorsement, your support, and um, everything necessary to move forward with the new, the new cycle. You're on mute. Yep, I'm still learning this Zoom thing, right? Uh, yeah. We just, uh, just got a lesson on it not too long ago. Um, so, well, I guess the first be, you know, question being is, um, you know, what, what role as um, obviously the incumbent have you played as it relates to maybe supporting faculty? Do you have any specific examples that you're willing to share with us? Yeah, so um, if I go backwards, at least to my first, when I came to this interview, I remember listening to a lot of the concerns and issues four years ago. And so I want to say that, you know, I've played a role in meeting some of the ask. For example, um, before I got on, the ask for a sabbatical, paid sabbatical, was on the table. And so um, that was one of the things that did get accomplished. And I can happily say that I was one of, of, of a team that moved forward with that ask and that need. And I'd like to think that in my four years, um, major things have been accomplished. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be still done at this time. But um, at the end of the day, um, I feel that I've been on the right team, uh, headed in the right direction, and continuing to make progress with issues, you know, related to uh, anything that's been sunshined. And um, I'd like to think I've pushed the envelope on some of the things. And I know that there's always going to be, you know, room for growth, room for improvement. And that's just something that we all need to, to do as teams working together to advance um, what needs to be advanced with faculty that play the crucial part of you hold, you're, you're the foundation, the building block of the college. And so we need to maintain that foundation strong and healthy. And so I'd like to believe that based on my actions and my votes that I've been able to sustain that. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the floor? Um, Pauline? Oh, thank you. It's going to take me a while to figure out where the hand is, because I always forget. Um, Part-timers, just talk a little bit about your uh, interest, support, um, perception of part-timers, please. So, um, personally, um, I think that there needs to be some changes and it's not something that I can do by myself. And so I know that as part-timers, um, being part of the, the bigger picture, sometimes there may not be uh, that perception that everything is equal. And although everyone gets pie, sometimes uh, not everyone gets the same amount of pie. And so one example of a, of a cause that I feel that um, I've been looking to push has been how can we get part-timers um, the equal benefits. And when I say equal benefits, I know that we set aside some money for your benefits uh, that you can draw upon um, for medical. Reimbursement, yeah. reimbursement. Right, but um, I would like to see that maybe in this next cycle with the conversation that started with some of the um, assembly people, that perhaps legislation could change across the board. And I don't think that that's like a novel idea. You know, if you work part-time in, in, in other areas, you could still have the same access to benefits, you know, to, to that, that piece of the pie. And so I'd like to see that change for our part-timers and that's gonna have to happen through legislation. And I think Cerritos has established because of your guys' work, a good reputation in, in the community and so that's something we'll have to lobby for to make some changes in the law so that it would be across the board. It wouldn't just be a benefit to our part-timers in, in uh, Cerritos, it would be a benefit to all part-timers throughout the community college system. And I think we're trendsetters and that's a possibility. 
Thanks. Thank you. Um, Stephanie? You're on mute. Thanks. Um, so speaking of healthcare, so um, we have been really lucky so far where our full-time faculty have benefited from having um, completely paid healthcare all the way up to family plans. And we had to fight really hard last time in order to retain that. And I'm worried that fight is coming again. So can you give us your, um, your position on retaining fully paid health care benefits for um, full-timers and their families? Um, well, for that, um, I'll always have my unconditional support. I myself believe in universal health care that we should all have, you know, health care and not pay these crazy costs that um, do happen for people that don't have their employees pay their health care. And so I'd like to continue that be the, the, the norm at our system in our community college and that we continue to lead by example that we can do it and still be fiscally responsible. And um, we have been. So we have been able to keep that. And unfortunately, I hate to hear that we've had to do it as a fight. But I just think that that's kind of who we are. We're always going to have to fight. Um, I don't know that in education, anything's ever gotten without the fight. Yeah, but I'll be here fighting with you for you and continuing to support that and other things that we deserve to have as educators. All right, we'll go uh, Henrietta, thank you. And then we'll go Henrietta, then Lynn. Hi, uh, Marta. Um, I'm uh, Henrietta. I'm one of the uh, EOPS counselor instructors. Mm -hmm. I've been at the college for, uh, this is my 20th year. Nice. And uh, I'm very excited because uh, recently uh, EOPS, CareLink, uh, CalWORKS, International Students and Veterans became part of, of a new division, which is Equity and Student Success. So obviously there's need for equity in terms of education and also taking care of our students' uh, well-being uh, holistically, not just academically and career-wise and instruction. So I'm wondering what thoughts you have as far as um, supporting uh, the new ethnic studies initiative um, at our campus and also securing resources to take care of our students' wellness. Uh, we're moving in the direction of um, when we have our students, we see them three times per semester. The first appointment is always to ensure that the educational plan is um, put together and we discuss career goals. And then follow-up appointment is always to check on their uh, grades. And then we try to correlate their grades and their progress with their well-being overall. And many times, I'm sure you know, uh, community college students have the greatest um, homelessness problem, lack, lack a lot of uh, basic needs, healthcare, uh, mental health resources, things that be become attached because of the impoverished um, population that we do deal with. You know, our students are literally part of, of the, the population that's living below poverty level. And that's why they qualify for EOPS, CareLink, CalWORKS. And then I would say of all the programs that support students, they all intersect somehow with EOPS. And so um, I'm very interested to know how you envision supporting um, our new division, our students, and maybe creating more of a space where they can come together and not only uh, learn about the richness of their culture through education, through the Agnes Studies Initiative, but also having community support. Do you have any resources? Do you have any ideas or thoughts of how you can support our new division and the needs of our students in our community? Well, first and foremost, I'm, I'm excited that, you know, the ethnic studies now is uh, actually not just a conversation, but a plan that's gonna be implemented and moving forward. And so in, in terms of education, that should have been something that was always embedded you know, across the curriculum, you know, when we talk about, you know, English, when we talk about history, science, just basically embedding everything that, that we should have had as a basis of education about, you know, our, our cultures, our languages, and so the representation of who we are. And so I'm excited about that. And I know that as we have looked at where Cerritos was um, five years ago, 10 years ago, there have been a lot of changes. Um, and with those changes, we have seen that, you know, we've 
called the attention nationally, locally, and you know, at the end of the day, a lot of a lot of those resources involve money, involve people and time. So I'm hoping with that money that that increases our staff and it increases our time and all those things that are important because as educators, you're at the ground uh, with direct contact. Um, and so everyone who has that direct contact with our students, you know the needs and, the, and our students have been very good at voicing their needs and um, letting us know what it is that they need and we need to honor that. And so I think it's great that we're looking to intersect and connect everything so that, you know, we can have a better uh, flow of services. Um, I think we have we do excellent work or you guys do excellent work, but you're always trying to find ways of doing it even better. And so um, making sure that we connect everything across the continuum is important because then you capture more of those students that are out there. And all of those things I think are what continue are what going to continue to give us the resources we need because with all the data that's being collected, we have actual data to prove that whatever issue we've identified is being met by X, Y, and Z. And then that generates money for the college. And so that's important that we're able to identify so we can ask when there's many. And um, I'll always support the ask. Um, I don't have an issue going out to lobby for us, you know, whether it's in Sacramento, whether it's in Washington, DC, whatever we need to do to get those resources. Because um, everyone at the bottom is building the base for all of these students to be the next, whatever they want to be. And that's crucial. That is really crucial. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, we'll go ahead with the last question from Len, and then um, so we have about you know about two or three minutes, and then okay. uh, we'll wrap up. Thank you. So Martha, um, I want to kind of push back and challenge you on this comment you just made. You said our students are very good about asking what they need, and as the undocu person on campus for. I would say the last couple of years, I feel like our students have been vocal about what we need on this campus, which is the Undocu and or slash Dream Resource Center. Um, you're probably aware that we don't have this center right now. So what do you imagine, like what can we do differently to make sure this ask is actually, you know, being well received and what can you do individually as a trustee um, in terms of action items to help this population? Um, I think because you're right, we've been talking about the center. And so on our campus, um, what is our ask? You know, do we have a location? Um, you're on the ground, do you see some place that is available? And if it's not, is that something that we need to consider like building? And so at the end of the day, um, I, I am going to agree with you about, you know, we have that need and we have been talking about it. And so our next step would actually to implement that plan because you guys do a lot of um, good community planning and community planning means that, you know, you reach out to the students. We have a thousand DACA students. And then on top of that, what other students do we want to add to this resource center? And so um, I'll support that in terms of the space and um, if you have a space in mind and you're putting it to me in a question right now, can you ask for us? I'll do that. I don't have an issue doing the ask, putting it on the table as a motion. And then when, if that's what, what it needs, if that's what needs to happen, um, I just need to know what the specific ask. Uh, and I've heard that we need the center and that's been the conversation, but I haven't heard that anything's moved forward. And so, um, for me, the ask would be the next month when we have our meeting, I need to put that motion on the table that we need to identify a space and um, we need to make that happen. We do. So I want to thank you for your time and um, I really appreciate you coming and, you know, sharing this with us and, um, you know, as it relates to like our, our procedures. Uh, so we'll get this to the faculty and making sure that um, obviously, we garnish that endorsement, but we'll be reaching out to you and staying in contact. But again, I just want to say thank you for um, coming and sharing your information and your story with us as it relates to um, your campaign. Um, and if there are any questions, you can reach me anytime. Yes. Um, do you mind if I take a picture of the screen for my little 
<laughs> my little um I don't want to say scrapbook because I don't think scrapbooks exist anymore exist anymore but um just my video scrapbook so one more please thank you you guys thank you have a good one have a good night uh, you too. Uh, so now we'll be bringing in um Mariana from the from limbo waiting room <laughs> Hi, Mariana. Ms. Pacheco, can you hear me? Okay, I'm on. Uh, uh, I'm unmuted uh, now. <laughs> hi, how are you doing? So, uh, thank fine. you for being patient with us and waiting. And um, we we really thank you for taking the time out to share share um, you know your campaign with us, and uh, obviously dedicating your time to become a board of trustee and help lead our our faculty and our students. Here at Cerritos College. Um, definitely want to hear maybe can you give us a little bit of introduction about your background and um, your candidacy and obviously you know share with any any other pertinent information you might have as it relates to your campaign for the Cerritos College uh, Board of Trustees. Sure thank you so much for inviting me um, and um, I'm actually a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for over 40 years I have my uh, bachelor's and my master's uh, in nursing, and my master's is in, actually in nursing administration. And I also have my teaching credentials. And I worked for LAC USC, a medical center for 34 years. Uh, currently I'm a, at Downey Unified School District and I've worked there for six years. I'm the nursing director of their vocational nursing program, also of their, um, phlebotomy program and their emergency medical assistant program because I worked a lot when I was at LAC USC, I worked a lot with EMS in developing policies and procedures. Um, so when I was an RN, I was part of the SCIU union uh, until I um, migrated into management. Once I got into management, I worked with the unions to be able to provide a, work, a safe work environment, to be able to uh, uh, work in collaboration with them uh, so that that way the nurses ha and had everything that they needed and the res resources that they needed. Uh, the other thing is that I'm also um, endorsed by our own um, union president for DEA and I'm also endorsed by uh, our school, school board members uh, here at Downey Unified. Marcia Sodatani, uh, Todd Corrin, Donald LaPlante, uh, and also um, endorsed by the mayor here in Downey, the mayor of Balflower, and also the city council. I have uh, the mayor pro tem from Downey, and uh, which is uh, Claudia Fermina, Alex Staub as our council member. So I'm endorsed by several um, uh, people here in our community. And I think the reason is because I'm also part of, I've been part of the Kiwanis Club of Downey and giving back to my community for the last, I would say 10 years. And I'm also part of the Elks Club, which is another membership here in Downey. I'm also cert certified, which in the event of a major disaster, I will be activated by the city in order to be able to be one of their first responders. Uh, I also have the students participate in a lot of numerous events. We've participated in several food drives. They also participate uh, as part of, part of the volunteer process of our campus that I've set up uh, in uh, health fairs and different activities that uh, I do. I have also worked with Cerritos College uh, with block grants, basically, because I'm part of the adult school. So I'm part of a block grant system. So Sirius College is actually the holder of our block grants. And uh, I work with the Dean of Health, uh, try to collaborate on different things to help both her students and my students so that we can better, I can bridge my VN students back into Cerritos College so they can get their RN. Uh, one of the things, I am an educator and understand the needs of, of my community. Uh, I've been involved in different uh, activities in regards to Cerritos College also. 
Uh, I have uh, been involved in numerous projects. Uh, in, when I was at LAC USC, I managed over 180 clinics and I also oversaw over 19,000 employees in regards to their health services. I received numerous awards from the County of Los Angeles. I was also able to reduce costs of uh, services to LAC USC and received a, an award from the Board of Supervisors. My biggest concern, of course, is the safety of the staff and the safety of the students and how is it that I can better um, prepare my students uh, to be able to continue their education at a college level and further their careers. And I always um, let my students know that the, the adult school is not where they want to end. I expect them to go to college. I expect them to go to the university. I expect them to become RNs. I expect them to be really engaged in, in their community and give back. So that's one of my biggest things is giving back to the community and teaching them how to do that. Um, the other thing that um, I really, because I've managed large budgets while I was at LAC USC, uh, fiscal responsibility and transparency and community engagement is important to me. The other thing is I've worked with a lot of community partners here. We have an advisory board where I work with different uh, community partners and engage their uh, engage them so that they can participate and they give us feedback on how to better educate our students so that they're skill ready. Uh, I have also uh, developed uh, Skills USA where we competed at the national levels and I, our students, our vocational nurses and students have actually won the gold and the silver at national competitions uh, at the national level. So I have been able to uh, do that. And to me, that's uh, extremely important because that shows this, that we are competitive at, throughout the nation, not just here in our small little city. Um, so uh, there's, I guess I have a lot of things and I've worked on a lot with the unions. And right now I am part of the DEA, um, uh, which is uh, the, our union for teachers. And so the staff really feel comfortable and they come to me and they say, can you talk to the union about that? Can you talk to the union about this? So generally, uh, I guess I'm their go-to person. And I do have the cell phone of our union president because I, I, I guess I'm the one they go to. Uh, I've also, when I worked at LAC USC, I worked very closely with the union. And, uh, I, I understand the needs of the staff and I understand I'm part of the, the, the staff at our school. And I'm also part of the teacher, California Teachers Association, which is the larger union that I'm also part of. So, Thank you. Um, so um, uh, Mariana, we're gonna go ahead and field some questions now. Yes. Um, and I guess we'll go, who's interested in some questions? Uh, Stephanie, you wanna go? Yes. Go Thank ahead. you. Um, so I don't know if you're aware of this, but at our school, we have the tradition where um, we've paid, we fully paid for health insurance for all of our full-time faculty for almost the entire time that the college has been in existence. And last year, for one of the first times, we had to fight to retain that. Really? So I wanted to know if, yeah, and, and, but the other thing is, that we were able to get the last time we went through negotiations was we were able to start providing some kind of healthcare reimbursement for part-time faculty, which we didn't have before. So we have a program right now that if part-time faculty teach 40% load for a certain amount of time, they can apply for up to $1,000 a semester um, for healthcare reimbursement. And so I wanted to know if we could get a commitment from you to retain those healthcare benefits that we currently have for full-timers, where every plan is completely paid for, including those for families, and also to try to expand this part-time healthcare benefit. Um, because I imagine, you know, healthcare is really important to us as a faculty. And if we lose these benefits, that would be significant pay cuts for all of us, especially for new faculty and those faculty who are starting families. So can we count on you for a commitment to our healthcare? Uh, yes, uh, and again, it's be probably because of where I've worked. I worked for the county. Um, we had all the indigent, we had all the people that didn't have insurance. To me, that was a huge thing. 
um, that it was important to me is health benefits. Uh, and I totally understand and you have, you do have my commitment because healthcare is important to me. Uh, and oh my God, I didn't realize that um, uh, they did that. <laughs> wow. Um, but yes, you would have my commitment because healthcare to me is extremely important and it's so costly. And yes, it would be a pay cut if it cuts into your pay. You're absolutely correct. I think Henrietta has her hand yeah. up, Chris. Okay, yeah, I see. yeah, I'm trying to see here. Henrietta? Hi, uh, Mariana. I really like your background in education and your union work and uh, your whole uh, profile sounds very dynamic to me. So uh, thank you for sharing all that. Um, I work in the EOPS uh, department as a counselor instructor. Okay. And um, I, I'm wondering uh, what ideas you have as far as um, helping and um, secure more of the equitable education uh, emphasis that uh, AB 1460 brought to our campus um, and ensuring that there's space so that students can come together um, and also benefit from education as well as giving back to their community. Do you have any ideas or, or experience? I hear you have some volunteerism and philanthropy in your uh, background. I do. Yes, um, I am hugely involved. Uh, I a Part of the requirement, if you're going to come to, to uh, our little adult school mm -hmm. and be part of the vocational program or be part of the EMT program, one of the expectations, and we let them know up front, you will, it's mandatory volunteer. You'll be mandatory volunteer. You're, how do I put it? I tell them you're going to be voluntold. Voluntold, yeah. <laughs> I use that word a lot too. <laughs> yes, so you're going to be volunteered. So um, we have worked, um, I've done like, uh, when we've had Ciclavia here, uh, I actually set up all the, all the health stations for them. I, when the street fair goes on, I set up all the health stations. Hmm. When they have their Christmas parade, I set up all their health stations. We also work with uh, churches and sometimes do health fairs there. I have worked with some industry partners and set up some health uh, fairs for them. So I've done a lot of different community engagements and to me, uh, giving back to the community is uh, huge. Um, and if you're going, and for the field that I'm in, that's extremely important. Uh, to me, that's uh, a huge thing. And I, I truly believe in, in engagement and I'm also, in, as part of the Kiwanis Club of Downey, I've worked with the youth at the high school level, providing leadership and uh, mentorship. Uh, I'm also part of the MAID program here at, at Downey uh, Unified, where we mentor high school students when they're in, in uh, before they get into their senior year. So they understand about what career path they wanna go. Uh, so they have an understanding what the workload would be, uh, what we do, and uh, so they get. So I've had students follow me around, <laughs> and sometimes uh, see what I do, see what it is um, uh, is if healthcare is for them. Um, so that's huge for me, and I know I also help my daughter, who's the mayor of Downey right now. Uh, and when she gets made students here in her office, I help her out in whatever it is that she needs so that uh, the students understand exactly what her role is. Awesome, thank you. So you have a grant writing background? I'm sorry? Grant writing background, do you have that? I uh, yes, I actually wrote a grant um, and uh, I applied for the county to get some grant funding for uh, uh, simulation mannequins for my VN program and EMT program. So I went before the, the committee and the board and I submitted my grant funding and uh, I had to go before them and present everything and I was able to get the full amount. So they are going to, the county is gonna be paying for the simula simulation mannequins which are extremely expensive. Yeah. Uh, to be able yeah. to, for me to provide a better education to my students. And I, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, we have a last question. Thank uh, you. Going to Pauline. Pauline. 
Hi, Manana. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us tonight. It's nice to be able to get to know you. Um, Thank you. I teach sociology and gender studies courses. I'm also um, the representative for the part-timers here on campus, and I work with membership issues. Um, are you familiar with some of the issues around uh, part-time faculty on campus? Um, uh, I, I know places? for, I, I'm familiar with the issues that happen here at our, at our school at the USD. I'm familiar with the fact that they don't get like certain benefits. And if you only work so many hours, you can only have, uh, you actually get no health benefits, no nothing, at least here. Uh, and that's, I guess, one of the things that um, uh, hopefully our union is able to fight uh, and get um, better benefits for those uh, part-timers that we do have. I okay, know great. that, yes? Just, okay, great, that's great. Uh, would you be willing to support part-timers? Oh yes, I know several part-timers that actually work uh, in, at Cerritos College and work also at the adult school. Uh, mm -hmm. They work actually through this, your CTE program. So I, a lot of times I talk to them and, and we talk about uh, what they do at Cerritos College. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do tell me that they're only part-time and um, they, um, but they love it, mm -hmm. the work that they do there. Mm -hmm. uh, when they teach, uh, so they would love to have more benefits and everything. I know that much when I've talked to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, maybe we have about two minutes. Any other uh, quick questions? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Mariana, sounds like you are super busy and you have a lot of experience in terms of different field, education, healthcare union work um so why do you want to be a trustee and how do you balance all these roles together or uh, har well, harmoniously okay uh well uh the reason i want to be a trustee is because i want uh, i want our students here at um at the adult school and also our students at the uh, at the at the um, at the high school to better have a better flow um, and to have uh, be really prepared to be able to uh, get into college. And to me, uh, my daughter went to Cerritos College and I saw the benefit of actually going to college and then she went on to the university. I also went to college and started out there before I went to the university. To me, this is a huge benefit uh, of actually starting off at a college level because it really does prepare you for when you get hit a university type of work. And what is it, what else can I do to help out in that way? The other reason is how uh, I, I've been working with the school district on safely returning back onto campus. So that's another huge thing is how do I safely, that's another thing that I wanna do and help out. How do I safe, safely return the faculty and the students back on campus? That would be extremely important. You have to have a plan. I've already managed to be able to develop a plan for our VN students to return to campus for skill. I've already managed to develop a plan for the AMT students to return to campus for skill. And I supervised and I, and I the first couple of days making sure that all protocols and everything were being followed uh, to make sure that the staff was safe and as, as well as the students. Uh, and so I would like to do the same thing at the college level uh, and be able to uh, engage in that, in that manner. And what sort of articulation agreements can we bring together and work better as a stronger unit? And I worked with the block grant, and so I worked with a lot of the faculty uh, that were on that block grant from Cerritos College. And it was extremely helpful to see the collaboration between the adult school and the college um, staff on how we were going to accomplish it, go before the state. And um, also, I advocated with our assembly member, Christina Garcia, to make sure that they voted in the correct amount for funding. And also, uh, during that time when we were working on all this, work with our senator also to work on making sure that those fundings were available to us. 
And so I would continue to advocate to make sure that the colleges are never left out in regards to funding when we get uh, from the state level and uh, because we do get funding from there. And I, uh, through Skills USA, I was able to work with the school, I mean, the state organization of, um, I'm trying to think of their uh, the name <laughs> for the schools. Uh, uh, so I work with them in regards to funding to be able to go to, because um, I'm a considered post-secondary, to be able to go to uh, Kentucky for competition, to be able to go to state competitions and be able to get the funding to do that. So I work with the, the uh, state ed education board to be able to get that funding to be able to do that. So, well, um, Mariana, yeah. Ms. Pacheco, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know I ran out of time. <laughs> we really appreciate you coming and sharing with us. Like I learned so much more about you and I, I'm sure our faculty did as well. And we really appreciate you coming. Um, and that would be it for now. And I'll be in touch with you in the next coming days um, about next steps and things like that as it relates to um, endorsements and other um, things like that. So thank you again and appreciate you. Um, and I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, I wanna thank everybody. Um, and I know it's a, a huge chunk out of your time uh, doing all this, but I do wanna thank everyone for um, for being here and providing me this platform to be able to speak to all of you. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. And um, I, for me, I'm doing it uh, for the students and the faculty. That's, that's my biggest thing and that's how I've always worked. Uh, especially when I was at the, at the hospital, that, that was also all, always my thought. Uh, the patients and the staff. With Now that I'm in education, uh, it's the students and the staff because you are the backbone. You are the ones that lead, you are the ones that teach, you are the ones that hold everything together. If it wasn't for you, we would not have the workforce that we would have. And mm -hmm. I thank you all for all the hard work that you all do because i know that it's right now it's driving you crazy because <laughs> it's driving me crazy so uh, i totally feel your pain because i know what it feels like yeah. all right, thank, all right you. thank you have a good night all right all right bringing in mason And I think he's with us. Is Mason? Are you with us? Yes. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry to. Yeah. Thanks for waiting. And sorry to keep you waiting. And uh, I think he's muted. Um, Am I muted? Uh, I should not be. Hear. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's a Zoom trick, right? That's a Zoom yeah. trick. Hey, you're muted. No one can hear you. Um, no. Uh, no. But yeah, thanks for coming. This is uh, Mason Nabusi, um, and you know this is our faculty. So Mason, go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Yeah, uh, before I begin, I'd like to first congratulate the faculty in uh, Cerritos College on the 65th anniversary of its, uh, since its inception. And uh, you know, thanks to the faculty and the great education they have given many of our students, it is really the reason why I believe that uh, Cerritos College still stands today. So happy birthday, happy anniversary for that. Let me introduce myself, I am a, uh, former student of Cerritos College. As some of you may know or may or may not know, I was the former student body president at Cerritos College. And being a student body president gave me a very unique perspective of the college, the community, uh, the faculty and staff and the students we educate. Um, I also was a proud supporter and a beneficiary of shared governance as a student representative where I got to serve alongside our faculty and staff, administrators and boards on various committees uh, that involved educational issues as well. I'm a lifelong uh, member of the Cerritos College Community District. And uh, upon my graduation at Cerritos, from Cerritos College, I ended up transferring 
from Cerritos College to Pepperdine University where I earned my degree in political science and thereafter uh, earned my law degree from California Western in San Diego. And I really attribute Cerritos College uh, for the great success that I had today. In fact, I sometimes will commonly say this, uh, if I could have gotten my four-year degree from Cerritos College, I would have. Uh, Cerritos College is a very special place and I have uh, spent over, last, over the last 30 years uh, giving of my time to Cerritos, uh, not just as a student and a student leader, but even after I graduated, I served on various committees that I was asked to come back on, whether it was a hiring committee or uh, something involving uh, an educational issue. I also was a, um, uh, served as, I'm sorry, I served two years on the Cerritos College Foundation uh, where we help raise money for students. And I also was the chair of the Cerritos College Task Force where we gathered community members to provide feedback to, um, to Dr. Fierro on a lot of the issues uh, involving Cerritos College and the community as a whole. So as you can see, I've dedicated a long, a long time, a lot of my life to Cerritos College because of the love I have and the passion that I have for Cerritos College. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and take some questions. Um, anybody have any questions? Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, so you might be aware of this, but so far over the entire history of our school, um, we've managed to fully pay for the health insurance for all of our full-time faculty. And that includes people, um, individual plans all the way to family plans. Mm -hmm. um, but the last time we went through a large contract campaign, we had to really fight to retain that. Um, even though we have the financial wherewithal to maintain it. So we managed to maintain that. Um, also in the last large contract campaign we did, we implemented um, some healthcare benefits for our part-time faculty. So we have a program now where if part-time faculty teach 40% of a full-time load for a certain number of semesters, they're eligible to apply for healthcare reimbursement of up to $1,000 a semester. And you can imagine how meaningful that is to our part-timers. And so my question for you is that, can we rely on you? Can we get a commitment from you to retain our, our health insurance, to retain the fully paid health insurance for our full timers and to work towards expanding healthcare um, coverage or healthcare reimbursement for our part timers? Because this is a really important issue for all of us. And if we lose um, that coverage or if we have to start paying more for it, it's a significant pay cut for all of us. Like in essence, it would be like me working one month for free. Absolutely. Yes, I, I wholeheartedly believe that health coverage is a very important issue, whether you're a full-time faculty member or part-time. I recall as a student uh, befriending some of my faculty members, some of my professors who were part-time teachers, and uh, they shared with me the struggles of having to drive from campus to campus uh, just to be able to earn their keep. And so recognizing the expense and the cost of health care, um, and certainly if we have the ability to pay for part-time faculty members to have reimbursement and to have health insurance, uh, I think we need to uh, maintain that and continue supporting that for our part-time faculty as well as our full-time. They do the same job, less hours, you know, because there may not be enough uh, full-time faculty positions excuse me, full-time faculty positions. But yes, I'm a, I, I wholeheartedly believe that, yes, we do need to support that. And I do support a part-time faculty member maintaining that reimbursement. Okay, and then also full-time maintaining our coverage. As well, yeah, full-time okay. as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or in, somebody else have a question? Um, so one question I would uh, bring up is when it comes to uh, what your perspective is and you know you have uh, various um, experiences with Cerritos College, what are some um, you know things that you're coming in as it relates to maybe potential gaps at Cerritos College as it relates to uh, success or you know community contribution? Um, so what are some of your goals as a you know as a board of trustee um, coming into the seat of area one? Yes well, like any place, there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be gaps. The key thing is that we always 
communicate with each other, that there's always a dialogue and that there always a, is a good faith attempt to understand each other's positions on various issues that may arise uh, during the course of our relationship. Um, our student, our school has uh, been given many awards and recognized nationally. I take great pride in that. Um, you know, some of the issues that we, that I dealt with as a student at Cerritos College are very different today than what we went through. The worst that we went through was we complained about the high cost of education and it was $5 a unit. <laughs> today, and I was earning $6 an hour and today our students are earning $12, $12.50 for minimum wage, maybe $15 depending on where they're at, and the cost of education has skyrocketed. So those are very important to me. I believe it's very important that not only do we also work with our leaders in Sacramento, local leaders, but we also continue to build bridges with local leaders, uh, local businesses. As a member of the foundation, we, made, we established connections with local businesses in the area to help place our students for jobs, also to uh, solicit contributions from them, and uh, to give scholarships to our students to make sure that they are funded. Uh, such programs as Cerritos Complete is another great success uh, for our college. But there are new issues that are facing our students today. I mean, we didn't have food insecurity and shelter and housing insecurity like we have today. So we need to, I believe, continue collaborating with our, our local leaders and businesses uh, to help students uh, face some of the issues, the new issues that they're having to contend with while they're trying to finish their education. Thank you. Um, any, any questions from the group? Yes, Doug. Yeah. Um, so I'm right now I'm serving as the grievance chair. So I'm, I don't know how familiar you are with how unions work, but when we have disputes between the faculty and the administration, mm -hmm. um, if we think it's a violation of the contract, um, they come to the union and we try to work it out. Mm -hmm. um, our contract is missing a clause for just cause and due process. So when investigations happen at our school, for example, mm -hmm. even things that are outside the contract, there isn't a um, negotiated process by which those investigations take place. And this can mean that they're not done consistently. And the school has run into problems where there have been lawsuits and things like that where we pay damages because things haven't been consistent. Mm -hmm. Yet, the administration is still resistant to putting this language in the contract. We actually have a PERB case against the district for refusing to bargain on this particular issue. Um, and the other part is the protections that are in ed code related to these kind of incidents only apply to full-time faculty. Part-time faculty are considered at-will employees and have no rights unless we negotiate them for them. Mm -hmm. So even those of us, even the, the rules that exist only apply to full-timers. And so can we count on you to support, you know, the inclusion of language that lays out a process for by which investigations are conducted and also um, language that provides um, guidance as to which types of, you know, activities would warrant an investigation because we don't have any of that right now. And I'm sure you can imagine how stressful it is to work somewhere where there's no rules, especially when we have this kind of churn of administrators, you know, sure. where we've got new people coming in all the time. Sure. Well, uh, as I had previously mentioned, I am an attorney and I practiced law for 15 years. So due process is very important to me um, that everyone has a fair opportunity to represent themselves and the issues that, uh, that are beforehand before the grievance committee. So I, I am definitely committed to working with the faculty. And I say that if you're an employee on the campus, uh, regardless of whether you're a full-time or a part-time employee, that if you are uh, accused or if you have any issues which may jeopardize your, your job, uh, everyone, in my opinion, uh, and speaking also as an attorney who uh, values due process uh, for my clients, whether regardless of what side I have been on, I'm, I definitely would, would uh, work with the faculty, uh, part-time, full-time, uh, and, and the board and the administration to uh, 
include language in there that I believe would be fair for everyone, especially, especially during an investigation process. Uh, Lynn, put your hand up. Lynn, oh, there you are. Hi, Lynn. Hi, hi, Mason. Um, so my name is Lynn Wang. Um, I work on campus as a financial aid counselor and um, for many years on Docu Task Force Chair. Um, so our campus is diverse. Uh, what I mean by that is we have immigrant students and documented students. Um, I guess share with us a little bit in regards to your understanding of our undocu population on campus. In your opinion, what are their needs? And as a trustee member, what would you do in terms of action, action items for this population? Yes, it, it, is, it is an issue. Um, you know, I... I'm a, a, a child of immigrants who came to this country and who benefited from the uh, college educational system. And I am all for anyone who wants to improve their life. Uh, I'm all for doing everything we can to help students. Uh, in other words, I, I, finances should never be a barrier for our students. Anyone who wants to come to our campus, regardless of their status, wants to come to our, stat, uh, our campus to learn and to better themselves. I think that regardless of your status, when you better yourselves, you better your communities. And uh, I think whatever the college can do to help uh, our student population to become successful uh, in their future, I am, I am definitely all for that. Uh, especially being a, a child of first, I'm a first generation of immigrant parents and so that is, uh, that is important for me, definitely important for me. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions from the group? Um, so one question I had is like, uh, what are some specific attributes uh, that you think you'll be bringing in that could really uh, benefit um, the campus communities, faculty especially, um, as a board of trustee? Well, I think if anything, I've got the institutional knowledge. Uh, honestly, I, even when I graduated, I never left Cerritos College. As I said uh, in my opening statement, I continued to be invited back to serve on committees, uh, various committees throughout the years. I attempted to form an alumni group. This is pre-social media days. Um, I, and I served on various committees. I also worked tirelessly, excuse me, as student body president. Uh, and I took advantage and I'm a great believer in the shared governance program. I worked alongside faculty, administrators, staff, uh, board of trustee members um, during my tenure there. Um, I can tell you that I bring, the experience that I bring is the institutional knowledge that I have. I am a lifelong member of the Cerritos College District. So I have an understanding of our community uh, being a student, I have a great understanding of the, the needs that our students face today as well. And uh, other attributes, I think law, being a, a former attorney, uh, and I still, have my, I still have my license, of course, but being an attorney, I think I learned the importance of listening and working together with people because all of us, regardless of whether we are faculty, staff members, uh, administrators, we all have the same goal, and that is to educate our students and to make sure that our college is, is there for the next generation of students. So uh, communication is very important to me and collaboration um, as well. So I, I bring those qualities and you know, I really have a great love for Cerritos College. Um, it's been a passion of mine. Education has been a passion of mine. Of mine, and I think we can all agree Cerritos College is a very special place for all of us, or we would not still be there at the college uh, in, involved in some capacity or some form. So I run for this position as a candidate for the Cerritos College Board of Trustees because Cerritos College has given me so much. And I think when you are given, you are more likely to give back. Uh, my goal is to be a voice for everyone on campus and in terms of my political holding, I plan to only run for one office and give Cerritos College my full focus. And I think being a leader involves not only having a vision 
and communication, but it also requires focus. And I plan to give Cerritos College my 100% focus if I'm elected to the Cerritos College board member, uh, as a Cerritos College board member. For me, Cerritos College is not a political stepping stone. Cerritos College is a stepping stone for our students who want to better, better their lives and better their futures. And in turn, they also better, better our communities as well. So uh, that is why I'm running and these are the attributes that I believe that I can bring as a Cerritos College board member. Awesome. Do, um, just real quick, do you have any other endorsements, um, you know, going into it or are you? Uh, yes. Stop? Yeah. Are you talking in terms of like political leaders and? Uh, or, yeah, or anything like that. Yeah. I do. Yes. I do have the endorsements of, uh, I can name them off or I can just, get in it. I have the endorsement of uh, LA County's former LA County supervisor, Don Kanabi. I have the endorsement of uh, Downey leaders, uh, such as Mayor Pro Tem Claudia Frometa. Alex Saab, Rick Rodriguez. I also have the endorsement of Tony Ayala in the city of Norwalk, who is the vice mayor, Jennifer Perez as well. And I also have the endorsement of former board of trustee members as well, uh, such as John Moore, uh, excuse me, uh, Bob Arthur, pardon me, Bob Arthur as well. Um, Rick, Rick Sanchez who was also a for, former board member. Uh, so yes, I've, I've earned uh, the support of, and of many members of the local communities and leaders as well. Awesome, thank you. So I, I think we have enough time for uh, one more question. Anybody out there have uh, another question they wanna for uh, any closing comments? Henrietta, no, good. All right, so do you have any closing comments with us, uh, you know, to leave us with? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, as, as I said before, I've got a, a long connection with Cerritos College. I have a very long institutional memory, and I am a recipient of the great faculty of Cerritos College. You probably have heard the names uh, Douglas Wessel, uh, Rich Heinrichsen, uh, Douglas, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ed Bloomfield, uh, Mr. Vandermortel. I mean, these are just some of the teachers that were there. So. I have a great respect and appreciation for our faculty. Uh, we are nationally recognized. I served as a student leader there where I've been able to work and collaborate with faculty members, students. Um, and I will tell you that back during the time when I served as a student body president, I worked with the faculty. There was uh, Proposition 98 was on the ballot and I printed cards out of my own pocket to give and to have signed by our students so we could give them to our local representatives. I also worked with our faculty when we were asked to reorganize our college because of a budget crisis we were facing back in 91 and 1992. There were plans to eliminate summer school and I worked with faculty uh, to advocate to our administration to keep summer school open and we were successful and we were able to keep summer school open that year. So communication uh, and understanding a respect and fairness to me are all very important attributes and that is what I will be able to provide uh, as a Cerritos College Board of Trustee member if I'm elected with your support. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Um, I know that, you know, obviously things are moving kind of quick, but, you know, um, I'll be in touch for sure within the next couple of days. And again, just appreciate your time. Thank you for coming and, you know, dedicating your time to be a Board of Trustee member or, you know, run for this position. So. We definitely appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all for your time as well. Have a good okay. evening. Bye-bye.